Imagine this. It's dawn on the North Atlantic. A low mist floats across endless grey waters, pierced only by the silhouette of a warship carving through the surf. The rising sun glints off steel, sleek, powerful, purposeful. This isn't a relic of a bygone era, it's the future of the Royal Navy. Welcome to ATO Future Hub, and today, we sail with the new Type 31 frigate, the cutting-edge Inspiration class vessel that is redefining affordability and flexibility in modern naval power. Our story begins with HMS Ventura, the first of five Type 31 frigates. Named to evoke daring and bold exploration, Ventura embodies a shift in naval thinking, building capable warships without breaking the bank. The entire five-ship program is budgeted at about £1.25 billion, which works out to roughly £250 million per hull. In an age when some warships cost billions apiece, that is genuinely startling, but this ship is no cheap toy. From the outside, you can see why. The Type 31 displaces around 5,700 tons, with a length of approximately 138.7 meters and a beam just shy of 20 meters. Its steel hull is built for endurance, stability and modularity, not just brute force, but adaptability. Powering this frigate is a CODAD system, combined diesel and diesel, with four MTU 20V 8000 M71 diesel engines, each generating over 8 megawatts, backed by four MTU generator sets for electrical power. She drives via two controllable pitch propellers through asymmetric shafts, capable of reaching a top speed in the region of 26 to 28 knots, and boasting a range of 7,500 nautical miles. But raw speed is not where the real story lies. The Type 31 is designed for modern, multi-role warfare. Her combat systems are impressively versatile, She's fitted with a Thales TACTICOS combat management system, an open architecture brain that ties together radar, weapons, communications and navigational sensors. Her primary radar is a Thales NS-110 or potentially an NS-200 in future refits, a 3D, 4D active electronically scanned array that can track aerial and surface threats with precision. On the subject of firepower, the Type 31 doesn't mess around. For anti-aircraft defense, she carries the Sea Scepter system, a vertical launch point defense system using CAM common anti-air modular missile to provide all-weather, 360-degree protection. For surface engagements, she has a Bofors 57mm Mk3 gun, capable of firing high-rate, programmable munitions. In close quarters, she's defended by two Bofors 40mm Mk4 guns, great against small fast attack craft or asymmetric threats. But that's not all, later vessels in the class are expected to carry a 32-cell MK-41 vertical launch system, potentially allowing for not only more Sea Scepter missiles but also anti-ship or land attack munitions in the future. That gives this warship potential punch far beyond its modest price tag. Step inside, and you find a well-thought-out design focused not just on combat, but on crew welfare and flexibility. The ship is designed for a core crew of around 100 to 105, yet can accommodate up to 160 or more when needed. This surge capacity means she can take additional personnel, specialists, or even a small team of Royal Marines or Special Forces if the mission demands. Her internal architecture is cleverly modular. At the stern lies a mission bay of about 119 square meters, capable of housing ISO standard containers. This means she can be reconfigured, anti-submarine warfare modules, unmanned systems, humanitarian kit, whatever the mission, she can adapt. The flight deck and hangar are large enough to operate a Merlin helicopter or smaller UAVs, giving her reach for reconnaissance, transport, or strike missions. The ship's electronics suite includes a Mirador MK2 electro-optical system, a suite of navigation and surveillance radars, and electronic support measures, all feeding into that TACTICOS brain. 
even the bridge uses a Synapsis WINBS warship integrated navigation and bridge system integrated with I assisted controls for smarter navigation and reaction. On the armor side, while the Type 31 is not a battleship, her design does not ignore survivability. Her steel hull is built to NATO naval standards, and the modular design helps contain damage, while systems are distributed redundantly. Her propulsion system is split across engine rooms, so damage in one area doesn't cripple her completely. And for self-defense, she is not solely reliant on guns, she also has decoy launches, torpedo defense systems, and provisions for future anti-ship missiles. Now, what about actual battlefield use? Picture the Type 31 deployed in a global hotspot, East Africa, the Persian Gulf, or the Indo-Pacific. Her endurance and range mean she can conduct long patrols protecting sea lanes, counter piracy, or even escort duties for bigger capital ships. She can launch her helicopter or UAVs for surveillance, drop into her mission bay to deploy small boats or unmanned systems, and her sea scepter system means she can defend herself and nearby vessels from air threats. But she's not just a defense ship, she's a presence ship, humanitarian missions, disaster relief, evacuation operations, a modular bay can be loaded with containers of aid, medical kit, or even refugee shelters. And in a conflict scenario, with 32 cell VLS, in later variants, she could fire anti-ship missiles or land attack missiles, giving her strike potential. Her gun systems offer flexible firepower, and her senses allow her to detect and engage multiple threats. Her agility and speed let her maneuver in contested waters, and her relatively small crew means lower logistical demands and greater efficiency. Looking ahead, the Type 31 is built with future upgrades firmly in mind. The open architecture combat system means newer radars, missiles, or electronic warfare suites can be integrated without a full rebuild. There's room in her design for more powerful radar systems, possibly even more advanced AESA systems, and the power generation margin ensures she can handle more energy-hungry systems later on. Future mission modules might include anti-submarine warfare, unmanned surface or underwater vehicles, or even directed energy weapons, should technology allow. And the VLS means she could, in theory, be upgraded to fire longer-range missiles, turning her into a credible strike asset. Back to our cinematic dawn, the grey hull of the Type 31 glints as the sun climbs higher. The decks are busy with sailors going about their tasks, maintenance, training, and drills. In the hangar, a Merlin helicopter readies for takeoff, the engines humming. On the bridge, officers scan a digital tactical map, plots updating in real time. This ship is not just ready for today's challenges, she's built for tomorrow's. All of this, the agility, the modular design, the open systems, the flexible firepower, wrapped in a package that costs only a quarter of a billion pounds per ship. That's the beauty of the Type 31 frigate. As ATO Future Hub, we're excited because this warship represents a potent fusion of affordability and emerging capability. It's proof that modern naval power doesn't always have to mean uber-expensive platforms. The Type 31 is lean, smart, and ready for a wide spectrum of missions. If you've enjoyed this voyage into the future of the Royal Navy, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss our next deep dive, whether it's the latest in naval tech, futuristic weapons, or the next generation of warships. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep your eyes on the horizon.